Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unreal Engine 4 and 5 tutorial. In today's video, what we're going to be going over is using sublevels to load and unload different areas of your map to really help optimize your Unreal Engine games. So let me hit play and show you what we're going to make today. So you can see we have this level loaded. If we're going to walk over here to this little archway, what you'll see is as we enter it, the another level is going to load, and as we come through, that other level will unload. And if we to go back, that will load back in and this one will unload. Now obviously you can see it happening, What you, you wouldn't normally want that in a game. Main reason why I've done that is because I want to show you it actually working and because the only other thing you'd need to do is just create a little alleyway here and make sure you load here and unload here for example. So you can't actually see it changing and see it happening. But for the purpose of today's video I'm not going over that because it's very easy to do. All you do is just move the different things to different positions. I'm going over the functionality, not the level design. Now this topic can be a little confusing for beginners, so please do let me know on Discord or email if you haven't understood it and I will help you out further. And you might also be wondering why you're using sublevels instead of world partition in UE5. And that's just because for a larger level, world partition you probably should go for, especially open world. But for a more confined level and smaller levels, especially ones that aren't open world, you don't really need to necessarily do world partition. Doing different sub-levels like this is perfectly fine, especially for team collaboration as well. This works amazingly because you can all work on different levels. But without further ado, I've talked quite a bit on this intro. This is what we're going to be going over and creating today. So let me delete all this and I'll show you how I've done it. So what I'm going to do first is go to my content browser, right click, create a new folder, name this maps just so I have somewhere to nicely and neatly organize my folders so I can put everything in one place so I know where it is. What I'm also going to do is I'm going to create a new level to do this in. Now if you already have a level where you want this that's fine I'm going to create a new one. So I'm going to go to file new level and I'm just going to create a basic level here. I'll create that and then you can see we now have a basic level. I'm going to control s to save this and I'm going to put this in my new maps folder here and I'm going to name this one world main. Now world, terrible name for it, but that's what I've got. And then I'm putting main at the end, or you might want to do persistent instead. So this is the main level where all the other sub levels are going to be held. So I will save that like so. And now I'll get rid of this tab here. So what we're going to want to do now is we want to get the levels tab, which you saw I just closed. So if you don't have that, we're going to go to window and then levels. And then we have this levels tab here. It may appear somewhere else for you. You can drag it where you want, but we have this here. And what you should see is we have a persistent level here. This is what you ordinarily have anyway, but we're gonna actually utilize this with sub levels too. So we have a persistent level. What I'm gonna do is just above the persistent level, we have levels. We're gonna click that and we're gonna create a new level. I'm gonna create an empty level as I don't want any other lighting as that's in the persistent. However, you might want different lighting scenarios for different levels, so you might want basic. Choose which one makes most sense for you, and we will create that, and I will name this one, for example, World Sub Level 1. Now, you can name these whatever you want. For example, you might have the World Main be Outdoors, and then this sub level might be House 1, for example. But you can name these whatever you like for what makes most sense. For example, if this specific level is going to house certain things it might make more sense to name it like that use a naming convention which works best for you and we will save that like so and now you can see it appears under here like this now in the bottom right of our viewport we can, you can see we have level world sub level one and we can click on that and switch to persistent and so this is going to show which one we're currently working in i want to work in the world sub level one and what I'm going to do is just create some stuff. So actually, let's go back to the persistent real quick. And I'm just going to modify this, make it slightly smaller, just so we can make some nice changes like this. So let's make that nice and small like so. In fact, what you could do is get rid of this entirely. You don't really want many things in the persistent level. But I'm going to keep this here anyway. And then let's switch back to the world sub level one. What I'm going to do is just duplicate this so I have a different floor here. And you can see in the bottom right, it says selected actors in world sub level one. If I click the other one, it is in world main persistence. So that's how you can tell which different level everything is in as well. So I'm going to get this here like so. Then what I'm also going to do is let's just get some more cubes on here. So 
This is going to be very basic stuff that I'm doing here just to show it off, just so you get the examples of it. I'm just putting stuff in the level so we can see it. There's no real level design here that I'm doing. I'm just making random stuff like so. But you can see all of this is in world sub level one. But now what if you already have a level created which you want to add into this? Well, that is possible. What we can do is we can go to levels and instead of create new, we can add existing. And you can see we now have access to the levels here. What I'm gonna do is go to third person maps, third person map here, open that up, and that has now been added. And you'll see that we can't actually see it. And I believe the reason for that is because this default third person map has world partition enabled, which doesn't work with this. So that wouldn't actually work. So I'll get rid of that and then create a new one. The reason why I still added that is because then I can show you how to delete a level. What we can do is we can right click on it and then just simply remove selected, press yes, and that world is now gone. So I will save this and then I'll create a new level in here. I'll create a level. And I will name this world sub level two. And if we open this up, you can see obviously it's completely blank. If I add in, let's say for example, just a cube like this, and I'll make it quite big so we can tell. If I go into unlit, you can see we have this cube here in this world. I'll save that, go back into world main, go back to lit mode, and then we can go to levels, add existing, and then we can add in world sub level two, and it's now in here like this. Now this might not be where you want, so how can we move it? Well, if we click on world sub level two, and then press this little pen icon here for some de level details, if I move this onto the correct monitor, what we can do is we can change the position it's currently in. So we can move it to be 500 on the X, 500 on the Y, and 500 on the Z, for example. So that is gonna be moving it. So we can move this to be absolutely wherever we want it to be perfectly like this so let's say we want it to be about here maybe down a little bit as well just like that and then we'll close this and then you don't have to open the other level to edit it again what we can do is just change the level down here to world sub level 2 which we are already in and then we can still modify this as we normally would as we were doing before as well in world sub level 1 so this is now going to allow us to have these different sub levels now, if I were to press play, what we can see is those levels aren't there. And now that is good because they are acting as sub levels. And you see on the right down here, they are unloaded. If we go back to that summon level details icon, you can see we have initially loaded and initially visible. If we tick both of those for world sub level two and then press play once again, you'll see that that level is now there. And on the right here, we can see that that is loaded. You can see it because it's not grayed out and it has an open eye next to it to show it is visible so that's all perfect however what if you want these to load in the game because that's really the point of why you do this is to optimize it so you can have the levels unloading and loading while the player is playing the game so what i'm going to do is make sure that i untick initially loaded and initially visible again and if we right click on it change streaming method and it should be blueprint by default you want to make sure that it is it's not always loaded we want to do blueprint and then what we're going to do is we're going to create a new blueprint. So if we go to our content browser and then let's just create a blueprint here. So we'll create a blueprint class actor and I'll name this BP load and unload or whatever it is that makes most sense for you. For example, this might be a door. So you open the door, it loads in something on the other side. And as you go through the door closes and unloads something on the other side. So set that up how you want. For me, I'm gonna do a box collision. Again, that would be the same for the door. However, you'd have a door on there as well. So I'm gonna add in a box collision in here and then I'll compile and save that. And I'll go to the event graph here. What I'm gonna do is delete those three nodes, right click on the box collision, add event and add on component begin overlap. What I'm gonna do in here is then drag out of this and I want to load stream level by name. And then this level name here is gonna be the sub level that we want to load. For example, let's say we want to load sub world sub level one. Make sure you spell this perfectly correctly. So we'll do world sub level one. And we want to tick make visible after load as well so we can actually see it. So we'll compile and save that. Now, if we were to drag this into the level, when we walk into it, this will actually load this new level. So let me also scale this up to the how I want it to be. 
and you also want to make sure that this is in world main persistent or a different sub level for example if we have this sub level here and then another one after it i could put this bp in world sub level one i'm hoping this all makes sense and if there is more things you want help understanding feel free to message me on discord or email me and i'll be happy to help out but if we press play we can see if we would walk into this it's going to load in that sub level perfectly like so now obviously i'm not done with this blueprint i'm just showing you that basic example there so if we were to open this up again what i'm going to do is go to the viewport and i will now actually scale this in here instead so let's make a very simple archway i'm not going to use an actual door i'm just going to create an arch so let's do something like this along these lines again very very simple just to get the idea across so we have something like this so if we get this box collision now and we have to move it here on the front side for example let's make this big enough like so when a player walks into this it's going to load something on the other side perfectly like that so we'll name this one entry box and then we'll duplicate this and move it to the other side and we'll name this one exit box and now just so we also know which way around this is in game as well what i can do is i'll get an arrow and then we'll place that facing the way we want to be the front so for example i'm going to rotate it this way as i know that the the way the arrow is pointing is the front you may decide to do it a different way so you do it on the other side for example you're going to be going through that way so the arrow is pointing the direction you're going through but for me i like to do the direction the arrow is pointing is, is the front side so if we compile save and go to the event graph we can now also right click on the exit box add event add on component begin overlap and unload at different level so what we can do is unload stream level by name and then we just do the same thing we did here so for example here i could do world sub level one so what i'm actually going to do is make this one load world sub level two and if we compile and save what i'm going to do is reset this size here and then also i'm going to move world sub level two to be over here so i'm just changing how i'm doing it to make it make a bit more sense for you so if we go back to the levels panel some of the details for world sub level two we can move it all the way over to where we want it to be and if you click on viewport edit you can actually move the whole level like this as well if that's a little bit easier for you which i imagine it probably will be so we can move it like this so now we have the level where we want it to be if we unclick viewport edit that will then be saved like so and then you can obviously do some more editing like that you want to do for example i'm going to actually move this a bit further back like this and also make it a little bit bigger i also move this over and then what i'm going to do is move my doorway over to here so i'll do that move it down and then i'm going to click on world sub level one open the levels panel and then i'll make this one initially loaded and initially visible and i also want to make sure that i rotate this the other way as again this is the forward direction for me so now if we to go back over here and press play you can see that this level is already loaded in automatically if we were to go over to our doorway it's going to load in the other sub level and as we walk through it will unload that sub level perfectly like so and that is now how we can unload and load different levels like that now obviously that's only going to be going one way so what you then want to do is create another one of these in the other level so for example if i were to move this over here so it's directly in, in between them and also make sure that i move this into the sub level one so how can i move something if i put it into the wrong level if i select it and right click onto the level i want to move into for example world sub level one we can then move selected actors to level if you look in the bottom right here selected actors is in world main persistent after i click this it is now in world sub level one so that works perfectly what i'm going to do now is go into world sub level two and duplicate this so it's in there perfectly like so we now have this in world sub level two as well what i'm also going to do is go back into the blueprint move these over and then create and then make this a dynamic blueprint so i'm going to right click promote to variable on the level name and i'll call this one level to load click the eyeball to make it instance editable and then do the same on the unload so i'll do level to unload and again make that instance editable 
perfectly like so. Now back in the level, we can now go to the details panel when we select it, and you can see which level we're loading and which level we're unloading. So this first one, we want to make sure we're loading sub-level two, unloading sub-level one. And then on the other one, what we're gonna do is we want to load sub-level one and unload sub-level two. However, again, we're gonna to want to make sure that we rotate this around perfectly like so, just like that. But now also, obviously, these boxes might be overlapping a little bit. So what we're gonna do is we'll press play and test this out to see how this looks. So this is all loaded in, we'll go over, working perfectly. That's now loaded in, we walk through, that's now unloaded. That worked great. If we walk back over here, that one loads in, we walk through, that one unloads. So this works perfectly and because I've put the doorway in the same position it doesn't look like it's actually changing even though it is. So this is how we can perfectly load and unload different sublevels to really optimize our game and again if I were to go to the levels tab over here you can actually see them loading and unloading in real time in the levels tab as well so you can see what it's actually doing behind the scenes. Now obviously you can actually see all of this working which you probably wouldn't really want and that's just because I've done it like this. What you would normally want to do in a game is probably put this in an alleyway or going around a corner or through a corridor or anything along those lines so you can't actually see what is happening. I've not done that today just because that is level design as opposed to actually functionality. I'm just focusing on the functionality today of actually loading and unloading the different sublevels as we have done here. And this would work the same way as well if I wanted to do it differently. So if I click on summer level details, for sub-level one and make that not loaded and visible, but then go on sub-level two and make sure that is, this will again still work. If we click on here, this level is now loaded, the other one isn't. Well, we walk over here, that will load in, and this one will unload, perfectly like that. So I think that will be it for this video as we've done everything we've wanted to do. What we've done is we've gone over using different sub-levels in Unreal Engine 5 so that we can load and unload these different sub-levels like so, which will really help to optimize your game and help it work a lot better. I really hope this video wasn't too confusing for you. I know this can be a difficult topic to get into, so I hope that I have explained it well. And if I haven't, then please do make sure to let me know and I will further explain it to help you out or if you think needs to be, I will make another video as well. So thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you found it helpful. And if you did, please do make sure to like and subscribe down below. So thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.